These notes are about trig functions, but in all four quadrants. I've already alluded to the fact that we've only so far dealt with sine, cosine, and tangent of our special angles where we could draw special right triangles. But what about sine or cosine of 120 degrees, an angle that we can't use a right triangle for? That's what these notes are about. Let's start off with this picture of a circle I've drawn on the xy plane, and this is known as the unit circle. The reason that this particular circle is known as the unit circle is because this radius has length 1. So a circle drawn with radius 1, we call that the unit circle. And it has some really cool properties. Let's think about what we can say. Well, if I'm talking about this point, for example, on the unit circle, I can call the coordinates of that point x, y. Do you see the right triangle in this picture? It's not fully drawn in yet, but take a look. If I drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis, I've made a right triangle. And because I named the point up in the circle x, y, I know that this horizontal distance out has length x. And the height of this triangle is y. Because I have that ordered pair, I can call those distances, those sides of those triangles. That's what an ordered pair x, y tells us. Go right x amount and up y amount. Now, that angle on the bottom left, let's call that angle theta. You probably see where this is going. Let's talk about sine, cosine, and tangent of angle theta. Well, sine of theta, I know, is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, is y over 1, if I'm looking at that small red right triangle. So, because we have y over 1, and anything divided by 1 is itself, I'm just going to call that y. Similarly, cosine of theta, we know that from Sokotoa, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be x. So it's really convenient that the hypotenuse is always 1, for these triangles drawn in the unit circle, because anything divided by 1 is itself. That's why we love the unit circle, because any triangle I draw in the same fashion will have a hypotenuse of 1. What's tangent? Well, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, y over x. Interesting. Let's figure out what these statements are telling us. Sine of theta equals y. Cosine of theta equals x. That means I could have rewritten our ordered pair, x comma y, as cosine of theta, sine of theta. You just discovered another way to plot points. Instead of saying, go, you know, write five units and up two units to plot the point five, two, instead you could uh, be given an angle and say plot the point cosine of that angle, sine of that angle. And notice that that will give us a point x, y that lies on the unit circle. That's huge news. We're reaching a way of evaluating cosine and sine of angles that are, you know, in all four quadrants all around the unit circle. Our x coordinate is associated with cosine of theta, and our y coordinate is associated with sine of theta. So remembering that, let's look back up at tangent of theta. Tangent was y over x, or sine of theta over cosine of theta. You may have seen this definition before, but here's some support for it. Tangent of theta is equal to the sine of that angle over the cosine of angle. We just removed one third of trigonometry because if you know sine and cosine, you know tangent. So what does this mean? Now that I have this alternate definition or this alternate way of thinking about the sine and cosine, if I think about them as corresponding to ordered pairs on the unit circle, I can start to evaluate trig functions of larger angles. What this really means is that sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle might be negative. Can I have a negative x value or a negative y value? Of course. And since sine and cosine are relating to the y's and x values of points on that unit circle, then we can have negative sine and cosine and, of course, tangent values as well. Let's take a look at some examples. Once we do a couple, it'll become a lot clearer. Let's evaluate cosine of 120 degrees. All right, let me first sketch 120 degrees. I know it's going to land in quadrant 2. Here's 120. 
Now I'd like to think about the unit circle and where that angle intersects the unit circle. So I can see this green point right here. The coordinates of that point are cosine of 120, comma, sine of 120 from what we just looked at on the previous slide. How do I evaluate those values, though? Do you see the right triangle in the picture? It's not fully drawn in yet, but I can drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis, and now I have a right triangle that will allow us to find the x and y coordinates of that point. Do we know any angles in that right triangle? Well, I know that it took 120 to get kind of over to that hypotenuse, so our reference angle here is going to be 60. If that's 60, well, then this other angle up here is 30, and it's our lucky day. We have a special right triangle to deal with. So let me just jot down how we knew it was 60. The reference angle for 120 was 60 degrees, and that's what we're going to use to help find sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, if we're on the unit circle, this radius has to be 1. So if the hypotenuse of that right triangle is 1, then from our 30, 60, 90 triangle relationships, the side across from 30 is 1 half, and the side across from 60 is 1 half times root 3, or root 3 over 2. Now, I know cosine of 60, but how does that relate to cosine of 120? Because cosine is our x-coordinate of this point up here, I know that cosine of 120 is going to be negative. You can see from the picture, we moved to the left before we moved up to get to that point. So, let me first figure out cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 half over 1, which is just 1 half. That means that cosine of 120 is negative 1 half. You can actually see that the ordered pair, the coordinates of this point right here, are negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2 because I wrote in the lengths of the legs of that green right triangle. So because cosine corresponds with the x coordinate, cosine of 120 is a negative 1 half. Just for fun, let's also jot down sine of 120. And that, you can see, is positive root 3 over 2. The y coordinate in quadrant 2 is still positive. So we have sine, we have cosine. Let's do tangent. Tangent of 120 degrees, I should really have degree markings on all of these, is opposite over adjacent. Root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. But I can see that both our numerator and denominator have a denominator of 2, and if you simplify that, that ends up being negative root 3 over 1, or just negative root 3. So let's think about what we did. We sketched our angle. We found our reference angle. We filled in the missing sides of our special right triangle. We used Sokotoa, and lastly we thought about what quadrant our terminal ray of our angle landed in to make sine, cosine, and tangent appropriately positive or negative. How about sine of 225 degrees. All right, let's go through those same, the same process we talked about before. Let's first sketch our angle. This is why sketching was so important. 225 lands here, right about. And let's see, that's quadrant 3. All right, so let me also sketch in my unit circle so I can think about the coordinates of a certain point right here. I can see my right triangle. I want to drop that perpendicular back to the x-axis to find the reference angle. Remember how important it was that we were drawing that perpendicular to the x-axis, or we were looking for our reference angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis, always to back to the x-axis. Let's see, if we went 225 to get to that terminal ray, then our reference angle must have been 45 degrees. So I'm going to use 45 degrees to think about sine of 225, and then I'm going to figure out if it's positive or negative. Okay, if we're on the unit circle, our hypotenuse is 1, 45, 45, 90. I know that it would be looking like something 1, 1, root 2, but now that our hypotenuse is 1, we're dividing by root 2 to get the legs. So these are 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2. 
that's the length of those legs. That means that this ordered pair, x comma y, is negative 1 over root 2, comma, negative 1 over root 2. They're the same. That should make sense. The two legs are congruent in a 45, 45, 90. So let's see which one's sine, which one's cosine. Remember that x, y corresponded to cosine theta, sine theta. So our x coordinate is cosine of theta. Now in this case, they're the same, so it actually doesn't matter. But let's write down all of the things that we know. I know that cosine of 225 degrees is negative 1 over root 2, and I know it's negative because it landed in quadrant 3, and our x coordinate was negative. Sine of 225 is equal to negative 1 over root 2 as well, because 225 landed in quadrant 3, and our y coordinate was negative. How about tangent of 225? Tangent of 225 is sine over cosine, but they're the same. Anything divided by itself will be 1. Negative 1 over root 2 divided by negative 1 over root 2 is positive 1. So that's really interesting. In quadrant 3, sine and cosine are negative, but tangent ended up being positive because it was sine over cosine. So I'm just going to leave it with those two examples. We're going to see a lot more in class. Think about all the angles that we could do. I mean, there's a lot of angles out there whose reference angle is a special angle, and we can do the same pattern. The new part um, is figuring out if your trig function is positive or negative. Good luck!